Many thanks to Dr. Janet Pearl for sticking around today because she did a Facebook Live on the sclerosing. And did I record it correctly? No, I didn't. So okay. my apologies. Thank you very much. Okay. So we decided, so since I just did a little bit on the sclerosing, we're going to talk, or Dr. Pearl's going to talk about what is a stump neuroma and what isn't one, and what, what constitutes a stump neuroma and why it needs um, attention with ablations and PRPs and so forth. So. Are away. we recording? We are oh, recording. Yes. Okay. I can see it all now, and I'll Excellent. just have to hit it all correctly, but yeah. So um, there is sort of a, a misunderstanding that a stump neuroma necessarily is the same kind of neuroma that was there. Um, um, well, actually, before I should back surgery. up a lot yeah. Yeah, before surgery. So a stump neuroma can occur after surgery. Yeah. Um, typically, uh, the surgeon will resect or cut the neuroma and resect back um, proximal or the ankle side of the um, metatarsal heads or those are the knuckles of the feet. Yeah. And it's uh, the nerve between the knuckles that, where the when neuroma the occurs. Mm -hmm. So by cutting the nerve you know, behind uh, the knuckles of the feet, the metatarsal heads, um, Often the the surgeon will will bury the the nerve the end of it the, the end, cut of, end it, of it the cut end of it into surrounding muscle because nerves will tend to continue to grow okay. and they look for things to or they grow to attach to something they're like they're like tree they're like roots yes kind of like roots kind of okay. like roots of a tree yeah and if they attach to a capsule of a joint it can become very painful every time the joint moves, these ah. uh, nerves can send pain signals. And the capsule of the joint is like the covering of the, the covering joint? Of the, the joint. covering of the joint, yep. So the idea is to, to bury it into soft tissue where it won't um, grow to something that will trigger pain. Yep. So um, a neuroma is basically a nerve ending that can spontaneously cause pain messages to form. So it can be a, a thickening of a nerve, like in the case of uh, a a Morton's neuroma. It can also be. Um, it can also be. Um, sorry, somebody just walked yeah, by. I know. Yeah. Um, it can also be just nerve endings that form. So even though uh, a stump neuroma could be a budding of, of I, at the I, end I, of yeah. the cut nerve, uh, or it can be just branching of the nerve that behaves like a neuroma, meaning it spontaneously fires and causes pain really? signals. So it doesn't <laughs> actually have to be like a, a bulbous thing. It doesn't have to be. But the end of the nerves are, get, I call them rogue pain signals. Like, right. Like pain signals that shouldn't be happening. They're kind of like bad children. That, that, that they're, they're, they're doing things that they don't need to do because pain is really a, a right. protective mechanism. So we need pain. Right. But in this case, it's a dysfunctional, it's it's a a dysfunctional, dysfunctional pain. pain signal not serving any particular purpose right. other than you know, yeah. irritating the person who's experiencing it right. and preventing them from what they, uh, should what be they doing. want to be doing. Yeah. So, um, so for us, these ablation techniques can be very helpful. They're often hard to see. They mm -hmm. are not always visible on... The stumps. Actually, yeah, the, the stumps, stumps aren't yeah. always visible either on ultrasound or MRI, MRI but um, we know that they're there because they hurt. Yeah. And these ablation techniques... Uh, can be very helpful. Again, it's it's trying to find where they are and getting my needle tip or my probe tip in the vicinity of that nerve ending. Mm -hmm. and that's the challenge. But we're actually doing a lot better than we would do mm -hmm. for people who have stump neuromas after surgery. And again, it's pain after surgery. I'm really impressed with the number of times we actually do one ablation, one PRP. And people feel significantly better. Yeah. It's, it's it because uh, in my mind, it's not just a plain neuroma, right? Because it's harder. Like basic, it's harder to access, yeah. harder to find, and not always visible. It must most be that of the time PRP. not visible. It must be that PRP that puts it over it's the edge for pain it's reduction. It's the combination. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, PRP is platelet-rich plasma, which is again a, a kind of an autologous or a a, a natural uh, part of the human body, your own body, that we put back into your foot that helps it really jumpstart its uh, healing properties. 
And so both of them really need to be done when we do a peer. When we've we do a post surgical together, and I feel, you know, we have for we've had a few people who have wanted only ablation, and I feel like we've had much better results when we've done the PRP with an ablation yeah. in combination. Because there's two sources of pain: the the, the scar tissue mm -hmm. and the the rogue nerve. Right. So you need to, if you really want to walk away and feel significantly better, you have to give yourself the chance of having right. both pain conditions treated. Right. Yeah. And the platelet-rich plasma is concentrating. It's getting the concentrated layer of blood that contains platelets, but also growth factors, cytokines, things that can stimulate can stimulate and propel the healing process and sort of jumpstart it yeah. where it has stalled. Right. Um, and. Can you talk about what, when we, we, what we say to people who've had the post-operative, when they want to come after they've had a surgery, we ask people to come with an MRI. And um, one person mentioned recently that they didn't tell, their, tell the office where they had the MRI done, mm -hmm. what was being looked for. But we decided recently that we should say to them, please look at the tissue right, as opposed want. to don't go looking for a neuroma after you've had surgery because they could be very difficult to visualize. Right. So the radiologist we may say... We want to look at the interspace. We want to, you know, where the neuroma was resected. We want to look for signs of infection. We also want to look for other structures in the vicinity that could also be causing pain. Right. Um, but we probably want to be, we want to be looking proximal to those metatarsal heads. Right. For any, any abnormality. Any but abnormality. again, it isn't, it isn't surprising at all that a stunt neuroma is not, uh, is not visible. It doesn't mean that that's it's not causing it's pain. It's not there. Mm -hmm. Right. doesn't mean that something is not wrong in Denmark right. and causing a lot of pain. Okay, great. Um, yeah, and of course, somebody that has been, you know, Matthew's story of how much... Oh, it's a great story. Yeah. But we have other people. I know. Not everyone has given a testimony. No, not everyone has given a testimony. He's, he's, he's but he was pretty impressive because he had the two surgeries in the one foot, mm -hmm. so, you know, done on the same day, I guess, probably. Yeah, yeah. and he was very incapacitated. Very and, incapacitated. and the level of function he's achieving is just wonderful. Yeah. yeah. He's not alone. <laughs> no, he's not alone yeah. by any means. He's the one that everybody kind of knows because he's on our website and yeah. on this group. But... All right, well, that's right. really so Thank helpful. Thank you so much, I so appreciate it. Thank you very much. Stump aromas and PRP, there's some reasons why. Okay. All right, take care. Thanks. Okay, thank Bye. you. And here we're going to hit finish.